Right folks, let's have a look at the second trend um, in our periodic table videos. Um, the second trend is the trend in something called ionisation energy. But there's no point in giving you the trend if you don't know what the heck ionisation energy is. And you don't, uh, whereas the atomic radius was easy to picture. What on earth is the definition of ionisation energy? Well, it is this. It is... Actually, let's put first ionisation energy. Implying that there's a second and a third, and we'll come back to them at the end. Let's do the basic definition first. What on earth is it? It is the uh, amount of energy needed to remove one electron from every atom in a mole of gaseous atoms. Blimey, talk about a mouthful. So the amount of energy needed to remove one electron <clears throat> from every atom in a mole of gaseous atoms. Just the sort of definition you need to recite every night if you're having problems sleeping. Because it's guaranteed to put you to sleep. Unfortunately, there are a number of trip wires in this definition that the SQA love to try and catch you out with. So, for starters, <clears throat> you notice it's got to be a gas. So you can't have it. It doesn't apply to anything that's not a gas. It's also atoms, not molecules. So if you see O2, for example, nope. It's got to be individual oxygen atoms. It's got to be a mole of them as well. So not half a mole, not two moles, it's one mole. Um, that is the definition of the first ionisation energy. How, how on earth do we write it? Well, we would probably write an example of this as being, say, aluminium. And it's got to be a gas. And that's okay, these are atoms, so that's fine. So aluminium gas changing into... Al1 plus gases, plus of course the electron that you stripped off. So that's how we would write the ionization energy, the first ionization energy. What I'm implying, well, I'm implying that there's a second, that's not that, by the way, the brighter amongst you should say, mm, that doesn't normally exist. You don't normally get an Al1 plus, and you're right, you don't, but the strange equation here does fit with the definition of the first ionization energy. Wonder what the second would be then. Actually, let's use a different colour for the second. Let's use my high tech teaching aids. So, what on earth would the second ionisation energy be? Well, you're taking the second electron off. So, we'd start this time around with Al1 plus, again, got to be a gas, and we're changing it into Al2 plus by removing another electron. And of course, I'm sure you can work out there's also the third ionisation energy which we take Al2+, plus and turn it into Al3+. Plus. What do the SQA love to do with this? Well, they love to try and catch you out here. There's a couple of things they can do. Um, <coughs> one of the common things they'll do is give you a multiple choice that looks something like this. Um, we have, for example... They might throw another, a different one at you. They might throw um, uh, or this. Uh, or this. <coughs> All of these are entirely wrong. None of these are the definition of the first ionization energy. This is wrong because it's a molecule. 
This is wrong because it's a solid. This one here is wrong because it's half a mole of sodium. And lastly, this one is wrong. Hopefully you can see why this one's wrong, because we're adding electrons instead of removing them. So all of these are potential tripwires. Um, the other area that I have seen them ask you about is they ask you to calculate the total energy required to do this. Can we put it in the corner here? So for example, they want the total energy required to change from Mg gaseous to Mg2 plus gaseous. They're hoping you'll see the 2 plus and go straight to the second ionization energy. But of course, in reality, because you start with no charge here, you've got to go to 1 plus and then to 2 plus. So you look up your data book, which I'm just going to pause and find the actual numbers for. Excuse me a second. So if you have a look at page 11 in your data books, folks, you'll find a whole list of ionization energies. And if we find magnesium, uh, the first ionization energy is defined as, what's the value there? 738. That's the energy required to go from no charge gaseous to 1 plus gaseous. And the second ionization energy for magnesium is 1,451 kilojoules. That's what it's measured in. That's Mg1 plus going to uh, Mg2 plus, which is eventually what we want to get. So we start from there and we end up there. These two numbers here, that's the energy required for the first step. That's the energy required for the second step. How do you find the total? The simple answer is you just add them together. And that would be the total energy required for that. Now, this preamble is all defining what the heck ionization energy is. So hopefully that's clear now. Um, the main point of this video was supposed to be, what's the trend in ionization energy? So we'll come back to that. Um, so the trend in predictions, I'll leave you again. Feel free to pause the video, see what you think. Do you think it's going to be more difficult or easier to pick off the outer electron as you go down and also as you go across? I'll give you a hint. If you think about the previous trend in atomic size, you might be able to work it out. Okay, way back. Great. Let's do the easiest one first. This, by the way, this is going to answer an age-old question. Do you remember all the way back when we looked at alkali metals and we showed you the famous videos? Drop lithium in, it fizzes. Drop sodium in, it goes bang. Drop potassium, drop rubidium in, it just bursts into flames. Why is the pattern in reactivity what it is? I'm just about to answer that question. The trend in ionization energy starts a... Uh, starts high at the top and it becomes smaller as you go down. So that means it requires less energy to strip the outer electron of cesium than it does of lithium. And you know what? You already know the reason why. Because of the layers of electrons compared to here, there are more layers of electrons, they act as shields, and this outer electron just flies off much easier than this electron does. That's one reason. The second reason is the physical distance between the nucleus and the electron. Remember we did that in atomic size? Look how much further away this electron is compared to this one. So this one here is able to be removed using much less energy than compared to the top of the group here. And that's why they get more reactive. This electron is desperate to fly off. It's got a lower activation energy. Remember that? See, this is why we teach it in this order. Told you there was a reason. Um, as you go from left to right, um, if you ever think about the, the trend in size before as well, we said there was an increased nuclear charge over here compared to here, and also no more extra layers. So three protons, ten protons, and no extra layers, no extra shielding. That means as you go from left to right, it actually becomes higher. The ionization energy becomes larger going from left to right. It is more difficult to pull electrons off here than it is compared to here because of increased nuclear charge and no extra shielding. Thanks for listening.